Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today I've got a touchy subject. We're gonna talk about the MIG Switch flash card. This thing will allow you to play games through the cartridge slot on an unmodded Switch using a micro SD card. Now, there's a lot of things to talk about with this, so this might be a kind of long video, but now that I have my hands on one of these, I kind of want to walk through the whole experience, talk about what's good about it and what's bad about it, and whether or not you would even want to be paying attention to this in the first place. Because I think that in some certain use cases, the MIG switch comes in really handy, but for many others, it will not. And so in this video, we'll kind of go over all those topics. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, as we get started, I wanna talk about who would actually be interested in getting a MIG switch in the first place, and I think I would probably be one of the primary customers. And that's because starting a few years back, I decided to start buying all of my Switch games in physical cartridge form. Part of me thinks that this is probably the last time that we'll have a console generation where you can actually collect your games. I mean, you can still buy discs with PlayStation and Xbox, but all the same, most of the time, you'll just be downloading the game anyway. So over the years, I've amassed a pretty big collection of Nintendo Switch games, and I usually will put the cartridges inside this holder right here, that way I can reduce the wear and tear on the boxes themselves. This thing holds 80 games, and if we put, say, a $40 value on each of these games, that means that all told, if you were to fill this up, it would be worth over $3,000. In fact, I often will joke with my kids that this is the most expensive thing that they are allowed to touch in the house. Now, thankfully, my kids are super good with this and they take really good care of it, but all the same, I always have this lingering fear that at some point, a random cartridge is gonna disappear. Not to mention the fact that if this happened to get stolen at some point, I would be out $3,000 worth of Switch games. And I think this is where the MIG Switch would come into play. I could take all of those games, put them on a micro SD card, and then load them into one single cartridge. So I think for me, that would probably be my primary use case, that I can reduce the wear and tear on the cartridges and the cases, and then I can also have all my games in one single place. Now, of course, there are other ways to play Switch games without having to carry on a bunch of cartridges. For example, if you have a large digital library, then this really won't factor in at all. But let's say hypothetically that you're in the same situation as me, that you want to be able to back up all your cards. So let's talk about how this works and how you would get here in the first place. Number one, in order to get the MIG switch, you would have to grab it from their website. It's actually up right now and available for pre-order. And the current price is $65 plus shipping, depending on your region. Now, in addition to the cartridge itself, they're also selling a dumper also for $65. This one, you would put the cart directly inside and then plug it into a computer, and it's going to extract all the files that you would need in order to put them on the MIG switch cartridge. And there are a lot of implications for that one. We'll talk about that more later as well. Now, assuming that you buy one and you get one in your hands, let's take a look at the MIG switch itself. Mine came with a very small wrapping around it that says make a change and join the revolution. If you look in the back, it's made in Russia. It even says it in Russian below, Stjelnevrasi. And I assume that's why they're using the word MIG with MIG switch in the fact that that's the name of an aircraft company in Russia. A little piece of trivia is that MIG stands for two different names, Mikoyan and Gurevich. And that comes from the two aircraft designers back in the 30s who started up this company. And for many decades, MIG was known for making fighter aircraft. And I think that's why we see the aircraft on the front of the cartridge. Either way, it just looks like a regular old Nintendo Switch cartridge, but with a micro SD card slot on the left side. It also has a small screw at the top of it, and if you take it apart, you can see the micro SD card slot and then two different chips. Now these chips have been sanded down, and I think that's to prevent cloning, because I fully expect that at some point other companies will try to make their own Switch carts as well. And by sanding down the names of these, it makes it a little bit harder for people to figure out. And I think this process makes a lot of sense. If you go onto AliExpress, you can see that there are a ton of different Game Boy and Game Boy Color flash carts, and so I do think that maybe five, ten years from now, we'll see something very similar for the Switch. Anyway, that's what the cart looks like, let's talk about how you actually would get this to work in the first place. And for this segment, I'm not going to show anything on a computer or anything, I'm just going to describe it as I talk to the camera. Now the first thing about the MIG switch is that it requires a full dump of your cartridge, so you're not able to just grab a ROM file, put it on an SD card, and then load it up. Now if you've ever emulated Nintendo Switch games before, you know there are generally two types of ROM files, XCI and NSP. Now, XCI files are cartridge dumps, and NSP are eShop files. And in order to get the MIG switch working, you will need an XCI file, plus a bunch of other files that are associated with your specific cartridge. And when it comes to emulation, you only need the XCI or NSP file. But for the MIG switch, you need all of those files. That's because you're going to be putting it directly into a switch, and those are some of the things that it checks. And those extra files are specific to that cartridge, and so it's not like you'll be able to share these with other people. In fact, if you were to take those files and share them with somebody else, and then you both try to go online with your Nintendo Switches at the same time, it would probably result in both of your consoles being banned. 
So this setup on its own kind of has its own DRM in the sense that it prevents you from sharing any of these files. It's really gonna be a backup of your own files for your own personal use. Now to get those extra files is a little bit tricky. You've got two methods. The first is the MIG switch dumper that they sell on their website for $65, but nobody's seen that yet. So no one's had their hands on it to make a review. So as of right now, I'm not really sure how that process will work. We'll have to wait and see when that actually releases. For now, the only way that you can dump a Nintendo Switch cartridge, including all those extra files, files is through a modded switch using special software that's detailed on the MIG switch website. So let's put this whole process together. You would take your Nintendo Switch cartridge, put it in a modded switch, use the special software to dump all those files, then you'd put them on a micro SD card, then put them in the MIG switch cart, and then put them in your unmodded switch. And even then, you wouldn't want to share those files with anybody else. Maybe I could see it if you and maybe another person were using a switch and you had both your devices offline, but that also loses a lot of functionality. And so I'm not really sure you'd want to do that either. And I think that when the MIG switch was first announced, I think a lot of people thought, oh man, this is going to open up piracy for everybody. But given the fact that we have those restrictions in place just based on Nintendo's own DRM practices, I think it's actually relatively safe. And so in the beginning, I was kind of hesitant about the MIG switch in the first place. I thought, well, what about used cartridges? What if you went to GameStop, you bought a used game, and then when you put it in your switch, someone had already dumped it and they were playing it on their switch. Then all of a sudden you would both get banned. And I think that's still probably a possibility, but I think it's also unlikely because the person who's doing that GameStop shuffle probably is not going to put their switch online for fear of their console getting banned as well. In fact, my friend Jeff over at Dammit Jeff just made a video about the MIG switch about a month ago, and he goes into this in detail. He even goes to GameStop and buys a game and kind of walks through that whole process. So I'll leave his video link down below. Either way, when it comes to the whole piracy thing, I don't really see it happening, at least right now, given the fact that you have to dump a cartridge with all of its different files, and then you would not want to use that on a different switch or with somebody else. Now, the technology, of course, could change at any minute. So if there was a moment where this could only play using XCI files, or if there was a way to like spoof those other files, then yes, that could blow everything wide open. But as it stands right now, the current MIG switch process is kind of anti-piracy on its own. However, even with all those limitations, I think there is still some merit to using the MIG switch in the first place, especially for someone like me who wants to back up their entire cartridge library and then be able to play them on a Nintendo Switch using only one flash cart instead. So next, I want to walk you through my entire experience of using the MIG switch over the past few days. Now, the first question I think is on a lot of people's minds is, does the MIG switch taste bad? And sure enough, it does. I'm not going to taste it here on camera, but I did check it out and I would say it's like 10% as gross as a regular switch cartridge. Now, I'm not sure if that's happening because I was putting this in my Switch and maybe there's some residue on it or whatever, but yes, this thing does taste bad. Now, for the real experience, let's talk about loading up games onto the micro SD card, and it's a very simple experience. All you really have to do is grab all those dumped files and then put them in the root directory of your micro SD card. And for the most part, all the games will work like that. Now, if the games have a weird file structure, they may have to be put in a folder of their own, but as it stands, you really just kind of drag and drop once you have all those dumped files. Now, I tested the MIG Switch on two different Nintendo Switches, my OLED and my Nintendo Switch Lite. Now, before I even got started, I went in and I turned off my Wi-Fi. I even went into the settings and like deleted my Wi-Fi settings altogether. Now, this shouldn't be necessary because the MIG Switch will look like a regular Nintendo Switch cartridge when you put it on, but I wanted to be more safe than sorry. Anyway, I loaded it up with five different games, Metroid Dread, Mario Kart 8, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Untitled Goose Game, and then Luigi's Mansion 3. And so once I had them loaded up in my micro SD card, I went and I put the cartridge into my Switch. And sure enough, it showed one of those five games and I was able to open that game up. Now, because I was offline, it had all sorts of warnings about starting the software and my cloud saves and all that kind of stuff. But once I got through all those prompts, then yeah, I was able to start the game and it was working just as I expected. Now, switching between the games is not super simple. There's not like an on-screen display or anything. What you have to do instead is you have to eject the card and then put it right back in. Now, the MIG switch is supposed to have an LED light that'll let you know when it's time to switch between the two, but that was not working on my review unit. Instead, I had to kind of find the pacing and timing of when to switch between the different games. And I found that it took about two and a half seconds. I ended up telling myself one lasagna, then doing it. So I would eject one lasagna and then reinsert. And sure enough, yes, it would cycle through those five games, but bear in mind that it didn't seem to be in alphabetical order, and so it's just kind of random which game is going to pop up. In fact, this whole process is kind of annoying because unless you get the timing just right, it's not going to show up. 
But then also, if you've got a large game library, you're going to have to do this a bunch of times. And I think that if you were to do this often, like say you had 100 games and you had to cycle through them, that's putting a lot of wear and tear on your cartridge reader. And not only that, you may have to memorize the order of your games to know how many clicks you have to get through to find the game that you want to play. Now, theoretically, you could take a 512 gigabyte card or even a one terabyte card, load up your entire Switch library onto it, and then cycle through your games that way. But from a practical perspective, I'm not sure how often you would actually want to do that. Say you've got 100 games in that card, that's 100 times you'd have to go through to get through the whole library. And so already there are some cracks in the whole experience. If you think about the idea that I had of just taking my whole library, putting it on a card, that way I only have to take one cartridge with me when I go on travel. Yes, that's still all going to be there, but I'm not sure how often I would be cycling through all my various games. All the same, it was a pretty novel experience to take my MIG Switch, put Mario Kart on it, and then play Mario Kart directly on the Switch while still holding my Mario Kart 8 cartridge. And so there are some merits to that idea, the fact that my Mario Kart 8 cartridge will stay nice and clean while still being able to play that game. But the actual implementation of playing these games is not as seamless as you might think. And knowing now how the experience is, I think that leads into my next section, which is going to be talking about whether or not the MIG Switch is worth paying attention to and whether or not it's going to be worth it. And I think my big takeaway here is that I don't really recommend the MIG Switch flash cart on its own, and that's because it kind of feels like a half measure. Probably the biggest limitation right now is that you need a modded Switch in order to dump your games and all those files. The thing is, if you have a modded Switch, you can already play Switch games from the micro SD card slot. So it kind of invalidates the need for a flash cart in the first place, considering the fact that you can just play ROMs on it anyway. And so unless maybe you've got a friend who has a modded Switch and doesn't mind dumping all your games for you, then you're going to have a modded Switch already in order to use the flash cart. And if you have that, then you don't need the flash cart. And so it's kind of a double-edged sword. Now, what I think is going to be very interesting is going to be that cartridge dumper. And once those actually start shipping to people, I think that's really going to change the dynamic for everyone. After all, at that point, you would be able to use the cart dumper to dump all of your files, and then you could have the flash cart as well to play those games. And so essentially, you can play all your Switch game backups without having a modded Switch in the first place. Not only that, if you planned on just maybe emulating the cartridges you already own, a cart dumper is going to be very helpful in that regard. You can buy your cartridge, put it inside, take the ROM from it, and then play that on other devices. And so when it comes down to it, it's all about that cartridge dumper and not necessarily the flash cart. The cartridge dumper is where the magic is really going to happen. The ability to just play the games on a flash cart is a whole other story altogether. And as it stands, just using the flash cart on its own, like the experience is not great. If you put 100 games on this, it's going to take you a while to cycle through all your games. So I do think there are some improvements that have to be done about the MIG Switch flash cart, and I'm very interested to see what that dumper is going to be like as well. In the end, I don't really think that Nintendo has anything to fear with something like the MIG Switch cartridge. After all, their own anti-piracy measures are are working great in this regard. So I really don't think that the widespread release of different cartridges and all those files are anything that we're going to see anytime soon. Now, if the MIG switch was ever updated to be able to use just ROM files, or if someone was able to spoof those other cartridge files, then I think the game would change significantly. But it does seem that right now, given its current implementation, this MIG switch cartridge doesn't seem to be the game changer that a lot of people think it is. Now personally, I could totally see myself using that dumper and the cartridge in order to kind of preserve my games on a micro SD card but the implementation itself still leaves a lot to be desired. But of course, I realize that I'm not the only use case out there in the world, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Given all the information we know about the MIG Switch, do you see yourself using this in the future? As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.